All right, 1 John 5, winding it down, we're at 18. Problematical passage, so we've reviewed it and reviewed it. Most important thing in the Bible in interpreting is context. Second most important thing, context. Third most important thing, context, which we've reviewed here. And the fourth most important thing is review the context. Fifth, review the context. Sixth, review the context. Those are the most, six most important things. You have to study and study again, review, take notes, give yourself a test, and then you'll be tested. God will see to it once you, he's happy that you've learned something. He'll give you uh, an opportunity to share what you've just learned. It's amazing. So the words of 1 John 5, 18 rendered, We have known that each one who has been born of God does not sin. But he who was born of God keeps himself, and the evil one does not touch him can only refer to the Son of God, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, let me divert for a second. It occurred to me, I looked up 1 John 3, 9, which we've been comparing one with the other. Let's look up that. <clears throat> it has, in a number of places, a number of translations, the one born of God does not practice sin. Of course, we've talked about the fallacy of does not practice sin. If you say a sin occasionally, you're practicing it, albeit occasionally. <clears throat> so you can't sin at all so the word there the one born of God does not practice sin the actual Greek word <clears throat> we take a look at this <clears throat> 1 John 3 9 blow it up 1 John 3 9 3 and 9 Everyone that having been born of God sin, not practicing sin. Well, what is practicing there? It's a indicative present tense. <clears throat> Let's look at the dictionary to see if that's indeed an acceptable translation. Poil, the verb, to make, to do, create. Produce, work, accomplish, perform, act. I don't see the word practicing there. Bad translation. It means to do. We'll just take a look at a couple of examples of that to make sure we're on the right track. I have some verses down here which, which has it there did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, make, bring forth, I will make, shall do, cause, make, do, do not, do, 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 thou doest, hypocrites do in the synagogues, in the streets, but when thou doest, it's do, does not do, does not sin, does not do sin. So I don't know why this interlinear wants to use the word practicing. It's a verb, it's indicative, it's present tense. So it's not practicing, it says does not do sin, which in English would be better to say does not sin. Does not do sin, okay, same thing. <clears throat> so we get over that. And we take a look at the NASB. No one born of God practices sin. It, is it, just, it should be do, do, then you don't have a problem with a possibility of a bad understanding. New King James Version does not sin. Young's literal does not, doth not sin. Holman Standard does not sin. Seems to be consensus here. Does not sin. It's absolute. No sin. Does not commit sin. <clears throat> All right, you want to add a little word in there? The ASV doeth no sin. NIV. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Wow. Wrong. Well, yeah, you can say continue to sin. You can say, well, <clears throat> that means you don't do any sin at all. Or you say, well, the, the, not continuously. See, you leave it open for a bad translation or understanding. And if you have an agenda, you certainly go the way you want to go. <clears throat> any case, 
1 John 5.18. Although the phrase rendered we have known at the beginning of 1 John 5.18 refers to the Apostle John, fellow apostles and his readers, fellow children of God, born of God, as it has throughout the entire epistle, epistle beginning at, in, in the first uh, chapter, <clears throat> 1, 1 through 6. And although it is true that all who have received Jesus Christ, to those who believed in his name, God gave them the right to become children of God, born of God. Nevertheless, 1 John 5, 18 does not have children of God, born of God in view. Since the words we have known that each one who has born, been born of God does not sin, and there's only one. But he who was born of God keeps himself, and the evil one does not touch him, indicate absolute sinless perfection, which is unlike the whole person of the children of God, born of God, who can choose to sin or do righteousness. Both sin and born, uh, and born of God nature is in view. So you have a sinful nature and a born of God nature, the inner man, Paul calls it, in view in John's first epistle up to this point and throughout the epistle to the end. <clears throat> it allows for you, for you to choose to do righteousness or to sin. And when you sin, we have a, an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and you confess those sins and move on. So the whole person, the sin nature, with the sin nature and the inner man, born again, child, children of God are, are in view. So let's move on. <clears throat> to W where we left off. We moved on to the next verse, 1 John 5, 21. Author John tells his readers, little children, referring to children of God, born of God, guard yourselves from idols, implying that children of God, born of God, indeed do have the capacity to practice sin. Hence, John warns them to guard themselves from putting anything before God in priority. Now, if, you, if you're just talking about the born-again child, who does not sin, why have the warning? Because the potential is there for you to do that, those things. So do not guard yourself from idols. If you weren't going to have the capacity to do that once you became born again, John wouldn't even bother saying this at all. So, hence John warns them to guard themselves from putting anything before God in priority, from doing anything that is not righteous. Any moral compromise with the worldly perspectives was likely to lead to some involvement with idolatry. A person an activity and a thought. <clears throat> so, author John tells his readers, little children, referring to children of God, born of God, guard yourselves from idols, implying that children of God, born of God, indeed do have the capacity to practice sin. Hence, John warns them to guard themselves from putting anything from God in priority, before God in priority, and from doing anything that is not righteous, any moral compromise with worldly perspectives was likely to lead to some involvement with idolatry with an unrighteous person or with an activity and a thought. <clears throat> Just compare 1 John 2.2, 2.12. 2, <clears throat> I write to you, little children, believers, their whole natures, both natures, sin nature, the inner man, the righteous nature the, within which your spirit, the, little, the Holy Spirit, is indwelling. Little children, because your sins have been forgiven. How do you become a child of God? Get your sins forgiven. How do you get that? By trusting alone in Christ alone. 1 John 5, 9 through 13. This, your sins have been forgiven you for your name's sake. So, conclusion. Despite remaining in mankind's fallen condition, children of God, born of God, may walk in fellowship with God by walking in the light of God's absolute righteousness, not according to it in sinless perfection, despite remaining in that, not according, but in the sense of, how do we do that then? How do we walk? We walk acknowledging that God is perfect light and absolute righteousness. You look to God, not to yourself. Don't examine yourself in that sense. Understand who God is. He's absolute righteousness. And then, when you understand who he is and focus on him alone, Jesus Christ alone, look to, to Jesus Acknowledging your sinful shortcomings before Holy God, 1 John 1, 8 to 10. Recognize that you, you can't claim a moment without sin, so you say, if you think pretty good of yourself, think a little longer. Then compare yourself to what would Jesus do and say. And then confess that moment in your thoughts that you knew fall, fell short of the glory of God. 
and while you are walking in that light, you can know by trusting what Scripture says about the matter, and not what the, you feel, such as by some kind of supernatural power taking control of your actions like an expression of a spiritual gift, that you have temporal fellowship with God and with one another who are walking in the light. So you're simply walking, comparing yourself, your walk, with God's walk, and then confess as you move on. Momentarily, moment to moment. Furthermore, Scripture says that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, 1 John 1, 7, cleanses each of them, the believers, from the temporal sin they are acknowledging and from all unrighteousness. So you get a chance to get it all cleansed, even though you don't enumerate it all. Hold it back a little bit. Well, then you have you say you have to confess that too. So whatever children of God, born of God, do in this name of God, while they are walking in the light of God's absolute righteousness and are expressing agape, godly love for others in accordance with that which they have properly learned in Scripture, which is in accordance with the truth of God as relayed in Scripture, their deeds will be purified from all unrighteousness and be acceptable to God for eternal rewards at judgment. This is true when children of God, born of God, endeavor to do the following. I'm going to take a look at this. Rewards in heaven. Boy, that's an important thing to focus upon. You get rewarded for being faithful. And if you're unfaithful, confess it. God declares it un uh, righteousness, perfect righteousness. And you get credited by the grace of God for eternal rewards. This is true when children of God, born of God, endeavor to do the following. Study, abide in God's word. Guardedly keep his commandments. And thereby abide in God, Jesus Christ. Hence, walk in the same manner as Jesus Christ did by the grace of God. Notice, by the grace of God. Speak to others from Scripture. Care for the unsaved and share their faith with them in agape, godly love, self-sacrificial love. <coughs> Express agape, self-sacrificial love toward the brethren and thereby affirm to themselves that by the grace of God they know God and are born of God and they know that God is love, is, God's love is perfected, made complete in them. Confess their sins while walking in the light of God's absolute righteousness. Be assured, because they are children of God, born of God, that their sins are forgiven unto eternal life and unto temporal fellowship with God. Look forward to Christ appearing, and thereby be assured of their eternal destiny. Keep God's commandments. To walk in the same manner that Christ walked, not love the world or the things in it. Know that they are born of God unto eternal life, because the world hates them like it hated Christ, implying that they are endeavoring to abide in Christ and God's word. Confess the Father and the Son, especially the Son, having come in the flesh. Know that God is light, absolutely perfect righteousness, and in him there is no darkness, no unrighteousness at all. Know that they are children of God, born of God, because they have the sure hope, sure hope of eternal life fixed upon the Son of God. 1 John 5, 9-13, through 13, memorize that. Test the spirits to determine if they are from God. Furthermore, in addition to self-examination to determine if they are abiding in God, children of God, born of God, while they walk in God's light, can know what it is of God and what is not relative to what they observe others say and do. But this is conditioned upon the accuracy of what one thinks another is saying and doing. Appearances can be deceiving when one lacks the knowledge of details behind what they observe. For children of God, born of God, neither have God's absolute knowledge of another's eternal and temporal position with him, nor know what God knows about another's understanding, motivation, and faith. And this is further limited to what the child of God, born of God, has an accurate understanding of what Scripture teaches on the matter at hand. So you have to study it in the order it was written, and go into a lot of details and take notes and share and, and listen and prove out by going back to Scripture again and again and again. Nevertheless, there are a number of indicators as to whether or not one is a child of God, born of God, on the path toward fellowship with God, such as persistent daily study of Scripture in accordance with the order in which each book of God's Word was inspired by the Holy Spirit to be written without skipping any parts. Hence, no cherry-picking of verses from all over the Bible without regard to context. Instead of thoroughly analyzing each passage to verify the context from the beginning of the book, it is contained in, in the order it was written, all of which must be in accordance with the normative rules of language, context, and logic, which are evidently used to compose the Bible. Persistent daily sharing of what one has learned and confirmed in one's study of Scripture. Persistent daily review of what one has learned and shared with others to make sure it accurately follows Scripture. Persistent daily concern for the eternal destiny of the others characterized by a reluctance to turn away from them, even despite rejection. Persistently resolving apparent contradictions within one's own, own mind about the Bible. God has indeed com communicated His Word in a perfect manner, utilizing these rules. <coughs> Persistently not willing to compromise if it means going against 
what one has learned from